As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest, come rest on us. Come rest on us. And as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest, come rest on us. Come rest as the Spirit was moving. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come rest. Come rest on us. As the Spirit, as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest. Come rest on us. Come rest. Come rest on. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you're in the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you're in the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you're in the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you're in the room, you're here and I know you are moving. Oh, I'm here and I know you will feel me. Spirit was moving over the waters. Spirit, come move over us. Come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the waters. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you're in the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you're in the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you're in the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you're in the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you are moving. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Oh, fire, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. the gates that heaven on it come rest on us come rest on fire and wind fire and wind come and do it again open up the gates let heaven on in come rest on us come rest on fire and wind fire and wind come and do it again open up the gates let heaven on in Come rest on Come rest on us Come rest on us Come down Come down Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound When you're in the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me Come down Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound When you're in the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know oh, you will feel down. me Calm down Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you're 
when you're in the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me Come down Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound When you're in the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me about the disciples when Jesus told them when he was about to leave he said go and wait for me wait for me to come wait for my Holy Spirit to come on you with power come on you in might and he said go and be in one accord in one place and they went and they were faithful with the word that he had given to them they went in faith believing that he would come as he said and I declare in Jesus name that faith is arising in this place arising for us here in the room and arising for you watching online so that wherever you are in this moment that Holy Spirit would descend on the place where you dwell would descend on the, the dwelling place that is yourself and that he would touch you that he would reveal to you his heart for you that he would come fresh that you would feel this and a welling up of his spirit on the inside of you so as we sing the rest of this song holy spirit come rest us rest on us we make that a cry of desperation we make that a cry of belief we make that a cry of faith to you lord god yes holy spirit
above everything that our hearts would desire we recognize Jesus that when you come in when you fill the room when you fill our lives Lord God you are the difference maker you are the difference maker how we long for your presence how we long for the presence of the King of Kings of the Lord of Lords to accompany us to go with us into our situations to go with us into our lives to be with us not just on Sunday morning for two hours or for for 20 minutes God but that you would live with us be with us Lord you are the one we hunger and thirst for you are the one we come after Lord God you are the one who aligns our lives with purpose you are the one God that we worship you we glorify you we magnify you You are the one, you are the one, you are the one, the only one, the sovereign one. You are, you are, you are, you are. And who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? You are matchless love and beauty, endless worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Let's say that again. Who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty, endless worth. Nothing in this world could satisfy. You're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence, your presence. 
world Nothing in this world can satisfy Oh Jesus, you are Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Nothing in this world can satisfy Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Oh, your presence is heaven to me. There's nothing like your presence. Your presence is heaven. before your presence right now in your presence you're already resting on us Lord we thank you for your spirit for where the twos and the threes are gathered and there's more than three in this place you are in the midst of us and if you are in the midst of us father whenever you're in the room healing takes place whenever you're in the room deliverance takes place whenever you're in the room you drop strategy in our minds god whenever in the you're in the room father we can trust you to do all things there's no unanswered prayer when you're in the room god and so right now father we thank you for your presence right now we thank you for the leading of your holy spirit and so, Father, we just relinquish ourselves as a living sacrifice, 
holy and acceptable unto God for we know this is our reasonable service for you and father we ask father that you would lead us that you would guide us that you would speak through us that you would operate through us let's miracle signs and wonders take place in this room father let the word of knowledge take place words of prophecy come forth in your word God father let your word be spoken not from a human perspective from a man's perspective but father from a god perspective father let you speak through me right now in the name of jesus father we will fail not to give you all the glory we fail not to give you all the honor that you're deserving we fail not to give you all the praise for you are worthy you're worthy to be adored you're worthy to be lifted up you're worthy to be magnified in this place god you are our creator you are the restorer father of our souls god we just give you the highest praise hallelujah we give you the highest praise hallelujah we glorify the king of kings and the lord of lords hallelujah for without you we can do nothing we breathe we have our being because of you god you are already moving in this room and we give you thanks and praise god you're moving among your people you're moving among people that are online father you're, you have filled the room father you have filled the media space god and we give you honor we know that we can do nothing without you jesus we know that we can do nothing without you jesus therefore we lay prostate before you we stand before you we relinquish ourselves unto you hallelujah father we open our ears unto you father so that we can hear the voice of god we will not hear the voice of another but we will only hear the voice of your spirit so father we ask that you would open our eyes that we may see, be able to see elijah told elisha told his servant open up his eyes god father we ask i ask in the name of Jesus that you would open up the eyes of those who are in the room father that you would open up the eyes of those who even who are listening to social media God that you will allow them to see what only God will allow them to see that they will see chariots of fire that they will be able to see that you are gathered around them father that they will see a host of angels around them that they will be able to see their their situations change father that they will be able to see their families healed father open our eyes so that we may be able to see what you see father open up our ears that we may be able to hear what you say father open up our hearts that we may be able to discern father what you are doing in our lives father that we may be able to discern what is taking place in the world god open up open up our thought processes father that we are able to think like you father open up our minds that we're able to imagine like you open up our open our perspectives father that we will know that you are able to do not just know the scripture but know in our hearts that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask think or believe god father we ask all of this in no other name but the mighty name of jesus and we believe it is so hallelujah. hallelujah you can have a seat as we go into the word of god for the spirit is moving in this place hallelujah and we want to recognize his spirit in this room in our hearts and in our minds more importantly in our minds and in our hearts because that's how he operates through us amen hallelujah the spirit of the lord is here is everybody excited to be in the house of the lord hallelujah hallelujah even the house of the lord on the airways is still the house of the lord amen you've turned your kitchen your bathroom um your living room wherever you reside into the house of the lord amen so today we're going to speak about we're going to continue where Apostle Dwayne left off. And he was talking about the woman at the well. And I don't know if you caught this, but I was so excited to hear some new information about this. Yes. Amen? Because, you know, we've been doing the Woman at the Well conference for the last, what, two or three years. But when I caught this revelation, it was almost like 
mind-blowing to me. Amen? And the, the message, the title of the message today is Moving with Insight. But, you know, I like to move and pick through scriptures because I begin to see how God expands his word in our understanding and how he begins to work. So there's always times in our life where we have to face challenges. Anybody? Everybody knows that. If you, if you haven't faced a challenge in one way or another, you're lying to yourself, right? And so sometimes these challenges come in the form of a crisis. Sometimes they are an opportunity. I call it an opportunity, right? Amen? An opportunity for God to shine through us. Or it is just life, just simple old life, right? But what do we do? The word of God gives us several examples of how God has been a very present help to man. Has he been a present help to you? Yes. I've experienced this help. But oftentimes we forget that God is a major strategist. Right? We start coming up with our way of doing things and our methods. But if you have the major strategist in the room, which he is here, then why aren't we tapping in to the strategies of God at all times? Last week, we saw the message from Apostle Dwayne. What I thought was so mind-blowing is that I've also always looked at the woman at the well in just one place. I concentrated on the woman, even though I concentrated on what the woman did. But I limited his experience to saving Samaria. But when you find out that Jesus' ex experience with the woman at the well in Samaria was a major strategic plan to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus to a nation. Not just Samaria, but to a nation. We found out last week that Samaria, where it was, where that well was, was a major connector to territories all over. So it was a place often where people stopped so that they could get water, but also to hear about what news is going on. And not only that, they come here and they might be going there. They come here, they may be going there. They may be going to the north, south, east, west, wherever, that connection spot. Jesus said to his disciples, I must go to Samaria. He must go through Samaria. He went there to meet a woman that was set ablaze to a nation. But this is the way that God works through veins. See, we think singular, right? But we have to broaden our horizon to think in multiplicity because that's how God looks at it. When I think about God, he looks down at this. He looks down at our situation. He looks down at this world, and he's connecting the dots on all different kinds of sides. It's like a humongous octopus with many hands, if I had to put it simply the way I put it in my mind. See, we look at our situation as, one, I'm dealing with, me, me being an example, I'm dealing with Edison Place. But I don't know what the effects of Edison Place. I'm not thinking beyond that situation. So, but that's the kind of God that we serve. One that doesn't just look at our needs only, but he looks at the needs that are connected to us. So what nations do we need to prepare for? Let, I'm going to use this story, and I used it when I spoke a message in Ghana. But when I began to, to sit in my closet and think about, God, what message are we bringing? He said, go back and look at the message in Ghana. And I was like, okay, let's look at it. This is easy. I will be prepared for this week. And... Um, as I began to look at it, God began to shine light on me and connected me to that spark that I got in last, in last week's message. And I said, 
Ooh, okay, God, I'm getting excited. I don't know about you, but when, when stuff connect for me, I get all excited about what God is showing me. So I'm driving in the car one day, and I hear the word hindsight. And I'm like, hindsight? I said, okay, hindsight. And I'm fig- creating my own definition of hindsight. And so I said, let me look this up. So hindsight is talking about what you should have done, right? And I said, God, why are you sending me that word? Anyway, that started a ripple effect. I said, we can't be looking at hindsight. We got to be looking at insight, you know, because insight is going to tell us what is going to give us, you know, knowledge and understanding about what's going on. And then... I was talking to my dear husband, and I was telling him about my message, and he said, baby, you're not talking about insight. He said, I see what you mean about insight, but God has foresight. I said, ooh, I see how this thing is coming together. And then I began to do some more research. God is, let me tell you, God is so good. He made this process so That same thing I was thinking about connection, he connected everything together that it rolled back into God gives us foresight so that we can build on insight to create strategy so that we don't have to be, so that we don't have to be regretful of our hindsight. Amen. Hallelujah. I say, God. Please, I couldn't have got this on my own. Insight, foresight, hindsight. So let's get into it. So I'm reading. So when I was in Africa, I was so excited about this story. 2 Kings 6, 24, 7 through, I mean, 2 Kings chapter 6, 24 to the end. And then we're going to chapter 7 to verse 20 all the way to verse 20. It's a lot of reading, a lot of reading. But it's, it's, it's really good. I'm trying to, try to see if I can get my Bible app. Here we go. Look at that. Come on. Oh, that would be lovely. Go right ahead. Okay. We're and starting at verse 24. Verse 24. And it happened after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and indeed they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and one-fourth of a cab of dove droppings for five shekels of silver. Mm -hmm. Then, as the king of Israel was passing by on on the wall, a woman cried out to him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, if the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? Mm -hmm. From the threshing floor or from the wine press? Then the king said to her, what is troubling you? Mm -hmm. And she answered, this woman said to me, give your son that we may eat him today Mm. and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, give your son that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. Now it happened when the king heard the words of the woman that he tore his clothes. And as he passed by on the wall, the people looked and there underneath he had sackcloth on his body. Then he said, God do so to me and more also, if the head of Elisha the son of Shaphat remains on him today. But Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. And the king sent a man ahead of him, but before the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, Do you see how this son of a murderer has sent someone (laughs) to take away my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he was still talking with them, there was the messenger coming down to him. And then the king said, Surely this calamity is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seas of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, If the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? (laughs) And he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? 
If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we will die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us <laughs> the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. When they said to one, sorry, then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until tomorrow light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they went and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, saying, We went to the Syrian camp, and surprisingly, no one was there, not a human sound, only horses and donkeys tied, and the tents intact. And the gatekeepers called out, and they told it to the king's household inside. So the king arose in the night and said to his servants, Let me now tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore, they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the fields, saying, When they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. Mm. And one of his servants answered and said, Please, let several men take five of the remaining horses which are left in the city. Mm. Look, they may either become like all the multitude of Israel that are left in it, or indeed, I say, they may become like all the multitude of Israel left from those who are consumed. So let us send them and see. Therefore, they took two chariots with horses, and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army, saying, Go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan, and indeed all the road was full of garments and weapons which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a sea of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hands he leaned to have charge of the gate. But the people trampled him in the gate, and he died, just as the man of God had said, who spoke when the king came down to him. So it happened, just as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two seahs of barley for a shekel, and a seah of fine flour for a shekel, shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. Then that officer had answered the man of God and said, Now look, if the Lord would make have would make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. Amen. Amen. So let me just give you a quick synopsis of the beginning of chapter 6. So Israel, um, the king of Israel... And Elisha basically had a relationship. Every time the king of Syria was up to something, Elisha let the king of Israel know what was up. To the extent that the king of Syria thought that one of his inner court guys was trading. Well, he was... Um, if you remember the Trump election, he had a bunch of leaks, right, in his campaign or in his, in his um, what do they call it, in his cabinet, right? So he thought he had the same thing. So he brought them before me, says, which one of you are talking to the, you know, to the king of Israel? And they said, none of us. It's his prophet Elisha. His prophet Elijah tells um, the king of Israel everything that you're about to do. It's almost like he's sitting in the room with you, right? And so the king of Syria goes after, wants to uh, kidnap, is what I call it, the prophet. And that whole plan was spoiled. But I, I, I want to bring emphasis just to the fact that the king of Israel was getting information from Elisha, which tells me what? 
they were on good terms. Right? Then a crisis arose. The same king of um, Syria now decides years later, I'm going to go and besiege and go and siege the king of Israel's city, the area. And so what they do is they surround the city so that the people inside the walls of Israel, where Samaria, where the Israelites are, they can't get out or get in because the Syrians are there as a threat. So what do they cause to happen? They can't get any resources. They can't go out. If they go out, they get killed. So they're stuck inside. So now what's created on the inside of them is an economic crisis, inflation because of what's happening on the outside, because of the Syrians, right? And so when Elijah goes and he tells the messenger, well, and let me give it in our terms, because we know uh, a gallon of milk used to cost maybe under $2. And now a gallon of milk costs how much? Anybody buying a gallon of milk? Almost $5 or more. Seven? Woohoo! So this is what they were experiencing with donkeys and whatever, you know, in their language. But this is what they were experiencing because now, you know, your resources are limited. So what do, if we know economics, if, you're, if your resources are limited, the prices go up, right? Because you don't have volume. And this is what the Israelites, basically, they were um, facing an internal famine. Even though on the outside of them, there was no famine. But what the king of Syria did was cause them, basically squeeze them. And this was happening. And so, of course, you don't want to die by the Assyrians, so you're going to stay inside and use the resources that are there. So this woman comes to the king of Israel and gets you the king. We're starving. It's a famine in here. And we decide that we're going to, you know, boil our children. So at this point, you know the people are what? Desperate. Now let's get to the fact, let's, let's get to the reason why Israel finds themselves in this situation in the first place. Because they do what they often do and what we often do. We stop listening to God. You know, we go off course. And so now they're in captivity, basically, by this camp that is around them. And so the king sees the desperate state of his people, and now he takes that desperation upon himself, and he goes against who? The very man who helped him against the king of Syria. What kind of foolishness is that? But we know that, right? We know that. It happens among couples. I was in love for years. And now that there's a crisis, financial crisis, health crisis, whatever, you've never done anything for me. Our friends, our family members, they're in a crisis. All of a sudden, their crisis, your crisis, they want to borrow money from you. You never did anything for me, even though you've been doing stuff for years. But what is that? That's fear. And fear breeds certain things. But I also don't want to stop there. I want to hit a couple topics in this story because not only that, now the king says, I'm killing Elijah. Not even the king of Syria wanted to kill Elijah. He just wanted to kidnap him. He said, he's so mad and desperate, he wants to kill Elijah. And so he sends a messenger or one of his officials over to Elijah's place. And before he can even get there, Elijah say, look at this fool. He said, I called him a murderer, but I'm going to give you Carol's version of this story. Look at this fool. He, don't, he doesn't even remember what I did for him all of these years. He, he's, he's, so, he's so confused by the crisis that he can't think. And so Elisha 
the merciful the, 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 the mercifulness of God gives Elisha a prophecy for the king, right? And the messenger who receives the prophecy says to him, Psh, that ain't going to happen. Because what, basically what Elisha told him was tomorrow you're paying $5 for a bottle of milk right now, but tomorrow you're going to pay one. And the, and the, and the messenger says, Psh, that ain't going to happen. It's impossible, right? It's impossible. And so Elisha tells her, him, it's going to happen, and you will see it, but you won't live to experience it, right? So that's important. Because it tells us one thing, that, that when we're in a crisis and we allow fear to take over, it puts us in a place of unbelief and doubt. Even the very word of God becomes doubtful, right? And so the message then gets back to the king. He does nothing with it. But then we run into these four lepers who's sitting in front of the gate of the city. He says, if we go in, we die. Because the last people they're going to feed in the camp is a leper. Which is why they're sitting outside. Right? Totally in disdain. And then the lepers say, well, you know, if we go in there, we're going to die. They don't even have food, and we're the last ones they're going to feed. But if we go over to the camp of the Syrians, you know, uh, less, our odds might be greater. Maybe they'll make us slaves. You know, maybe we'll carry our baskets, but we'll get some food. You know? So let's take our chances. But if we go and we die, hey, we were going to die anyway. So the lepers go over there, and they find out that the Syrians did what? They broke camp. Why? They broke camp because they thought they were being invaded by the Hittites and the, and, and, and the Egyptians. They thought that the, um, that, um, that the king of Israel had organized with the Hittites and the others to come against the Syrian camp. And so they broke off. They were like, uh-uh, we're going to die. We can't live against both of them. So what did God? God created chaos that made them fled. So when the lepers got to the camp, what'd they find? Food for days. Food for days. Clothes, riches, gold, chariots, everything. But guess what? The leopards know, but guess what's happening in the walls of the, is, is, uh, of the, of the Israelites? They're still going through a famine because they don't know. They don't know what God's done, right? And so while the lepers are feasting and enjoying themselves, they reflect back. And I say the Holy Spirit tapped them on the shoulder and said, you got to let the others know, Right? And so they say, okay, we can't enjoy all of this for ourselves. We got to go let um, the Israelites know. So what they do, it, but I, I like this about the, the four leopards. They know their situation. They're like, we're going to take some food for us. We're going to hide it. We're going to take some gold for us. We're going to hide it. We're going to take some supplies for us, and we're going to hide it. Because when they come here, please, they're going to take everything from us. So they go and they go to... The gate, they don't even go inside. They go to the gate and they begin to shout a message. Tell the king the Assyrians have broke camp, you know? And so they get the message back to the king. And the king has some people in his court and one of his servants is saying, hey, we can't take this message literally. You know it came from, the, from lepers. They could be working for the Assyrians. This is my version Okay, they could be working for the Assyrians. We better not go. What does that represent? Fear. But one of the sane people, or sound servants, says, hey, we need to at least go and check it out. At least go check it out. You could be careful. Check it out. 
And if you lose somebody, he said, what? We're only going to lose a couple men. <laughs> yeah, somebody got to die for the cause. Right? <laughs> Take one for the team. So here they go, and they find out, shucks. The Syrians have broke camp. Look at all of this that we have. And now their resources were limited, and now their resources have just exploded. And so what Elisha prophesied came to pass. The God didn't know how it was going to happen. We never know how it's going to happen. But what does God ask us to do? To trust him to trust him. So when I looked at this message and this lesson, I said, come on, we got to pull some keys from this. And God began to speak to me about the very things I was just touching on in this story, and which I think we need to keep as principles. Because life is always going to throw us a blow. And the first reaction that we have oftentimes when something knocks us off our feet is we get scared. And the next immediate things that happen is we go into fear because we don't know what's going to happen. But the Bible tells us that he's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. So one of the things that we cannot do is we cannot allow fear to exist for five seconds in our thought process. Because once it comes in, it begins to create enough spin around in our heads to remain there. It's almost like when a, when a python begins to grab its um, victim. The, the thing about a python is when they begin to grab them, they catch them, but then they begin to spin around and, spin and begin to squeeze them. And that's exactly what happens in our head when we allow a thought process of fear to sit there. It begins, it's not just going to sit there and be still, it begins to swirl around in our head, continuous, because it doesn't want to let go. It doesn't want to let go. So it begins to squeeze our thought process. And in the process of squeezing our thought process, it, sweet, it squeezes the life out of us to be able to think, to be able to respond, to even be able to hear the voice of God. So when we talk about a crisis going on or even an opportunity in our lives, one thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to fear. And, don't, and one of the things that I know us as, as ethnic people, as, as, as Caribbean and um, African-American people, we're very emotional. We're very connected to our emotion. Something happens, we go into emotion. And oftentimes, we can't be individuals that operate according to our emotion because that tends to stay with us, right? And so when I talked about, when I, when I mentioned fear, one of the things that we have to pick up from the story is that whenever we have fear that, comes, that, 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 that encompasses our mind, we seek to blame somebody. We seek to blame somebody. It's the way my mother raised me. It's the way my father raised me. Oh, it's because they did this. It's because that. It, it, it's just a natural response, Right? It, it, we hardly look at ourselves. Because so when we begin to blame someone, it misdirects our, our, our analysis of the situation. So then we can't come up with strategy, which is why we don't want to be there. The next thing that we do that fear causes, it causes doubt and unbelief, right? So look what happened. The king was in a crisis. Him and Elijah were running partners. All of a sudden, he experienced this crisis, and he says, Elisha is the problem. He's the one, and now he wants to kill him. The same person who had been giving you revelation from God about King Hasiria, you begin to doubt the track record of the man of God. So that's another reason. Another thing is, as I mentioned earlier, it removes sound thinking. One of the things that you learn when you are swimming and you run into a situation in the water, 
where you can't stand up anymore, you're out in the water, is they tell you not to panic. What is panic? Panic is fear. Why? Because at that moment, you cannot think. And because you can't think, you're going to drown. And so we cannot allow fear to put us in a panic or to paralyze us, paralyze our minds from being able to think, because then it removes sound thinking. The king was not sound in his thinking. He saw a famine. He saw this woman boiling her child. We're, we're going through a crisis. This is God's fault. This is God's fault. This is the prophet's fault. I can't think about a solution when all I'm thinking about is panic. I'm going to drown. I'm going to drown. So that's the other thing. That's the reason for fear. The next thing that we have to do when we're going through a crisis or we have an opportunity is we have to remember. Remember what? We have to remember the track record of God. What did he do for me last year? What did he do for me last week? What did he do in his word? We have to remember the track record of God because it's the track record of God that is going to tell me this God that I serve, he can take care of this because last year he took care of that. Right? What else do we have to remember? We have to remember you serve a capable of God. Not only does he have a track record, he's capable to do, as we know, exceedingly abundantly, but he is omnipresent. He is omniscient. He knows everything and he is everywhere. So why would we not understand that God is a capable God, right? We have to remember in our minds the story that we read about Gideon, right? And when Gideon said, I'm the lowest in my family. And matter of fact, my tribe, Manasseh, is the lowest tribe there is. And me, me, I'm hiding in a wine press, right? So, um... So, so if God did it for Gideon, then guess what? That same God who was able to do the impossible for Gideon can do the impossible for us. Just like he did for Joshua at, 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 when he was um, at the walls of Jericho. What God told Joshua to do did not make sense. Walk around with your people on the seventh thread. Walk around seven times and then scream all the walls are going to come down. Logically, what? Stone walls are not going to come down. What he did for Moses, walk up to the water, raise up your, your staff, and then the sea will part. It sounds ridiculous. But anything can happen with God because he's a capable God. Other thing we want to remember is we want to remember the prophecies that were spoken over our lives. Oftentimes we forget them. I make it a habit to go back and read them or play them back if I recorded them. Because in situations where I feel like I'm caught between a rock and a hard place, I got to remember what God said because I believe him. Right. And if I believe him, then what he says is going to come to pass, even if right now I can't see it, even if right now I don't have insight. Right. That's number two. Remember, the next thing that we have to do is we have to listen. Be open for a miracle. When Moses put his staff over the sea. The, o the ocean opened up because he was open for a miracle, right? When Gideon decided that I'm going to follow the leadership of God, and just, like, and, and just like Gideon, sometimes we have to put our fleece out there, throw the fleece out, throw the fleece out two and three times. But, but even from the, th the, the, the throwing out of the fleece, Gideon, he, he, to him, God had proven to him that you're with me. It's not that he didn't believe that God was there. He believed it. He wanted to know that God was with him. I understand that. Because oftentimes God asks me to do something. I say, God, I want to make sure this is you and not me. I need to know you with me. 
You know, so we throw our little fleece or whatever out there. And, and so once we know that he's with us and then we, you know, we put our chest out, we begin to walk with authority. You know, and that's what Gideon did. He began to walk with authority. And that's what Moses did when he begins to put open the Red Sea. So we have to remember that we serve a God. We listen. We listen out to hear what God is saying because he is one who can make a miracle happen. The next thing that we want to make sure when we listen, we want to listen for foresight. God, what are you saying? In Jeremiah 29 and 11, he says, I know the plans that I have towards you. Not plans of destructions, not plans to harm you, but to give you an expected end, to give you favor in your situation. That's what he's doing. So we said, I, I got this from an, uh, an author. His name is Dr. Drucker. And he is a um, PhD at, I think it's Regents University. He said, we can at best achieve imperfect strategic foresight or at worst, thoughtless hindsight. Right? Let me read that again. We can at best achieve imperfect strategic foresight or at worst, thoughtless hindsight. How many of you said at times, in hindsight, I would have did something different, right? Not, okay, but hindsight's not bad, right? Because we need foresight, that's for sure. But we, wanna, we don't want to exclude hindsight because sometimes we miss it. Now, we can miss it twice if we don't learn the lesson from the hindsight, right? So we use what we missed as an opportunity to build on for the next time. The next thing that we want to do when we listen, we want to listen and use insight to develop strategy. God has perfect strategy, strategic foresight, meaning that we're talking daily to someone who knows everything. All we have to do is listen and be patient, right? And be patient and be obedient. Because sometimes we get frustrated and then we stop listening because automatically frustration closes our ears. I learned that recently. Frustration causes you not to hear. Because the only thing that's on your mind and is taking up space in your heart, when I say heart, I don't mean a beating heart, I mean heart in that, that consciousness. The only thing that is existing there is frustration. And frustration is a barricade to hearing the voice of God. It's a barricade. So I also got this thought from the same Dr. Drecker, and that is biblical leaders who were in time, in tune with God, were given clear strategies as to how they could achieve the goal that was set before them. Clear strategies. He gives us that. Did he not give it to Joshua? I mean, it sounded ridiculous, but it was a clear strategy. It worked. Prophetic. If you get a prophetic word and it comes to pass, guess what? It was definitely prophecy, right? A clear strategy. Next thing that we want to do, this is something that we want to make sure of. This is why we don't want to put ourselves in a place of frustration. This is why re, um, worship is so important. Because let me tell you what worship does, because I've been frustrated before. I'm sure we all have. But a couple days of consistent worship will get you in tune with God. It will, it will, it will take you higher. You know how we think about God in his presence and, and then we think about a child and what, what, what happens when we go and we pick up that child is we give that child a higher level so they can see. When we go into worship and we allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in worship, I'm not talking about you asking for nothing. I'm not talking about that. I'm not even talking about you praying for somebody. I'm talking about you just connecting with him and just riding 
in his presence. When that happens, it puts us on a higher level. When we're on a higher level, we're not dealing with frustrations that are on the lower level. Okay? It puts us at a place where we experience God's perfect peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding. And when I'm in that mode, guess what I do? I can hear God. I can hear God because I'm not fighting with what I'm hearing. I've gotten to a higher level. So that's what we do when we listen. And the last but final thing is that we trust God. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 says, trust in and rely, and I'm, I'm reading the Amplified here, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him, and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord only and turn etern- entirely away from evil. I love this song that just came out by Mag- Maverick City. It says, I trust in God, my Savior one, who, who, oh, wait, I can't even think of the whole part of the song. My Savior one, he never fails. He never fails. I trust in God, my Savior one. He never fails. He never fails. And this is the part um, that I love about this song. It says, I sought the Lord and I heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and I heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and I heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. So when we seek the Lord, when we seek him, he's going to answer. And so he is safe for us to put our trust in. So when we think about foresight, when we think about insight, when we think about hindsight, we think about the God who is able to guide us if we're not operating in fear, if we're remembering what he did, if we're listening to what he's saying to us, we can begin to trust the God who makes mountains move. We can begin to trust the God that parts red seas. We can begin to operate in strategy because the key to us winning souls for the harvest is not what somebody else did. It's the strategic plan of God for this house. For every house, he has an assignment. Do you believe that? For every house of God, there's an assignment for us. And God pulls in individuals in the house to complete his assignment. So it's not just about me attending church. It's not just about you attending church. It's about God's assignment. And we could say overall, yes, it's to win, you know, souls to the kingdom. Yes, of course, to build up the kingdom of God. But there's other immediate assignments that he has for the house. And so God, the one, the major strategist, when we think about sieging or or, or, uh, sieging the harvest, we have the major strategist who is on our side, who is downloading to each and every one of us the strategy to bring in the harvest. The word says that the, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. But guess what? God worked with Gideon's army with a few. So the question is, do I need a lot of laborers or do I need a major strategist? And the word tells us, 
I need a major strategist. I need, this, I need to know what he's saying to me so that I can do and follow through what he has intended for my life. Let's stand to our feet. I sought the Lord, and I heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and I heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God. My Savior, one who never fails. He never fails. I trust in God. My Savior, one who never fails. He never fails. I trust in God. Just declare that. My Savior, one who never fails, he never fails, I trust in God, my Savior, one who never Father, we thank you, God, that we serve a God that we can trust. Yes. Father, you said in your word that you would be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. That even as we close out this series on bringing in the sieging, the harvest, God, Father, we ask that we open up, we ask, Father, that you would enlighten us, that you would, that you would send a deposit in our minds, in our hearts, God, that our ears would be open, God, that we will remember that we serve a God that does miracles, that we serve a God who, who, who woke up Lazarus from the dead. That we serve a God that when that when Peter cut off his ear, he was able to he put the ear back on and heal him, God. That we serve a God who is able to heal and to set free, who, who healed the woman with the issue of blood only by touching the hem of the, his garment. That we serve a God that is able to do miracles. And not only do you do miracles, but Father, you work your miracles through us. We serve a God who saved Israel. We serve a God that even when Abraham was about to, to kill his son, you wanted to see the obedience of the man and you said, I have a ram in the bush. That's the God that we serve. The, the God that we serve is one that has a ram in the bush. Hallelujah. We serve a God that when the Shunammite woman loses her son, she could call on the man of God and he can come and that son could come back to life. We serve a God that even when, the, even when the men brought the woman who caught, was caught in the very act of adultery and the men began to stone her, Jesus asked them the question, whoever has, is without sin cast the first stone. And all of her accusers left. We serve a God who preserves us, who keeps us even when we're wrong. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we trust. That's the one that we serve and that we trust. The Jesus who hung on a cross to die for us. God sent his only begotten son 
to die on a cross so that we would not be condemned. That's the God that we serve. And a son that shed innocent blood for those who weren't innocent. God, we stand before you right now, God as the laborers to your harvest, God, as the workers in your vineyard, Lord. And we ask, Father, that you would enlighten us. We ask that you would give us insight. We ask that you would give us foresight, Father. We don't want to be in a place where we're, where we're regretting that we had to use hindsight. But, Father, we're asking, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would speak to your servants that you would give us strategy because we're learning from the major strategist. Father, we have our cups open to receive from you. Not just so that we can feel your anointing, God, but so that we can experience your anointing, Father, so that we can walk in your anointing, God, so that we can breathe, so that we can move in your anointing, God, and we can operate in the strategy of God to win the kingdom. Your word says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, and you say all these things that shall be added unto us. Father, we're not seeking the things, we're seeking the God of the things. We're seeking the one who, who just doesn't give us cars and houses, but the one who gave Solomon wisdom and he was able to preserve a nation. God, we're seeking the one who, who spoke to Joseph and he was even during a famine, the years of plenty and, and the years of famine that he was able to save his family. But not only his family, he was able to save a nation because he had foresight and he created insight that gave him strategy to save a nation. Father, we serve a God who, who his son Jesus went and met a woman at a well, God to speak into her life, Father. Not so he could just save Samaria, but that he can save every territory connected to Samaria. Father, we thank you. That same wisdom, that same knowledge, that same foresight, Father, we ask that you would give it unto us. We, we make ourselves available to receive it. We don't lock ourselves into frustration and fear that are barricades to hearing from you, God. But we allow ourselves to be open and worship to you so that we can always hear from you, God. So that we, you can always give us an instruction, Lord, and we can always obey. So we fulfill that in which you designed us to do, that in which you've destined for us to do, our purpose in this world, God. So we stand before you, Lord, asking for insight. And Father, forgive us, give us, forgive us at times that we've been frustrated, that we've been in fear, that we've been, that we've been afraid. And Father, from this point on, let us operate in your fullness. Let us stomp out fear in our lives. Let us remember what you did, the prophecies that you laid upon our lives. Let us begin to listen to you, Father. Let us not only listen, but let us hear. Let it go in the inside of us that it becomes a part of our heart and our knowing, Lord, so that even when we begin to walk and begin to operate and we begin to speak, that only thing that flows from us is the word of God. And Father, let us not forget to trust you. That even when we can't trace you, Father, for you have not told us to trace you. You just told us to trust you. Even when it looks like we don't see you in our situations, God, let us just trust you. For you said to us, trust in you with all our heart. Don't lean to our understanding. But you said in all your ways, all our ways, we acknowledge you. And you promised us in the word, in your word, you would direct our path. So, so we thank you, Father, right now for your people. I speak a supernatural blessing over them right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, that you would remove all doubt and fear, Father, that you would remove all frustration, Father, that may be going on in their daily lives, Father 
that you would remove God anything from you that 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 anything from them that creates a barrier between you hearing them or them hearing you God Father, we speak it over them right now in the name of Jesus. We give them a God perspective over their lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We declare, Father, that their heads and they're not the tails. Father, that they will not allow the dog's tail to wag them, Father, but they, they will not allow the enemy to knock them off course but they will identify the enemy where he is and continue to walk in your presence. Father, we thank you for blessing your people. We thank you for touching them. We thank you that we can trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come rest on us, come rest on us. When the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, we thank you Lord. Come rest on us, as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come over us, come rest on us, come rest on us, hey. come rest on us, ask them the rest, come rest on us, come rest on us, we thank you Lord, come rest on us, come rest on us, come rest on us, as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us, as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Thank you, Father. You may take your seats. Father, we just want to thank you that you are safe for us to put our trust in. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for this insightful word that when in hindsight we look at it, <laughs> it will settle into our hearts and our minds and our veins and everything else. It will bring forth good fruit unto foresight for the plans, the strategic plans that God has for this house and for our lives. We thank you for Pastor Carol. We bless her. We thank you, Lord God, for speaking to her in the secret place for making her heart and her soul come alive with this word, Lord God for the revelation, God, because it's not just about being able to prepare to come here and speak your word to to your people, but there's something that you do even in the midst, in her own heart, as she and you connect, Lord God, in that place of intimacy, God, where she's reminded that you are there with her and for her, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for just continuing to strengthen her in your word, God, for equipping her, for taking her leaps and bounds, God, deeper and deeper in love with you, Lord God, and that out of the overflow of that love, God, this house and many others are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, you know, when I get up here, usually it means that we're almost done, that there are some announcements that need to be shared. I want to start off by welcoming you. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Glad to have our visitors who are more like family. Is this your first time with us in general? No, but it's your first time here. So we'll ask you to stand. We'll pray for you. As we do for our, our family, please stand. Just you can stay right there. I'm not going to ask you to come and say anything. Everybody, you can just stretch your hands out. Father, we just want to thank you for your daughter and for your son, who you brought into our company, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have invested in them, Lord God. 
that they have not put those talents, Lord God, into a hole and buried them, Lord, but that you have caused them to be multipliers in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, even for the investments that are set before them, for the ideas and the strategies and the foresight that you have poured into their lives, Lord God. I thank you even for that unique strategy, for that unique investment, Lord God, that comes out of communication one with another, Lord God. Between the two of them, I thank you, Lord, that there's a special something, a special seed in the ground, Lord, yet to come to fruition, Father, but you are causing it to bloom in this day and in this hour. I thank you, Lord God, it is the season for it to come to light, Father, it is the season for it to take root downward and bear fruit upward in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, the things that they have hidden in their hearts, Lord God, and spoke about even together in their bedchamber, Father. I thank you that the plans that you have uh, set up with them and you have, you have inspired in their hearts, Lord God, that they shall come to light and that they shall flourish and they shall come up like a tree. I thank you, Lord God, that you are blessing them in every area of their lives, Lord God, in their health. I thank you, Lord God, for wellness from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord God. I thank you that every place that they step is terrible for them to take and it shall be taken in Jesus name I thank you Lord God that you're strengthening them in ministry as a couple Lord God to be a mentor even to other young couples coming up behind them father to speak life to speak life to speak life Lord God to declare the word of the Lord over them God to give insight and foresight father God so that they will not have to look in hindsight at the things that they have lost father I thank you Lord God that you are strengthening them Lord God in wisdom father I thank you Lord God you're causing them to think right thoughts Lord God I thank you Lord God that everything they're put you can put their hands to do shall be blessed by you I thank you for blessing their children for it sprinkling down sprinkling down all the way through the bloodlines God for there are those who have set up good plans for their children and their children's children Lord God I can't so fear in Jesus name where fear will come up Lord God to, to draw on them and to, to worry them and cause them to have stress I thank you Lord God that the word concerning them is goodness and long life and peace forevermore Lord God I thank you they're, that they're growing together you more united in you, Lord God, with each other, God, and with you yourself. I thank you, Lord God, for dreams and visions, Lord God. I thank you for spiritual encounters and experiences with you. Awaken the flame on the inside of them. Cause it to grow and to grow, Lord God. May their desire, their hunger and thirst for you come up in leaps and bounds. For Father, you said that those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, that they shall be filled. And I thank you, Lord God, for the infilling, for the infilling, Lord, of this latter rain season for them. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you with much love, with much love, with much love. Amen. So just a few things we want to celebrate today with Sarah Jane, who's not here. And I want to encourage you to, as I always say, pray for those who you may not see here today. Some of them are traveling. Some of them, you know, are dealing with a little bit of sickness or, or whatever it is. But just keep the families that are represented here usually in prayer. But Sarah Jane and Marvin and the family, they're traveling this weekend. And her birthday is coming up on June the 2nd, so no Kate today, but we'll have Kate when they come back. And that same week will correspond with Sister Zilla, if I'm not incorrect. Yes, she's June the 8th, so we'll have a little bit of cake and a little bit of party. Next week, next week, and um, we also want to let you know that the mail drop in the community that we did not have last week because of weather and a few other things, we are going to have that this Saturday, June the 3rd, weather permitting pray for the weather this week as well okay we had a really great time the 21st of may going out and walking and getting to know some people and have some laughs and so on <laughs> and get some sunburn and all the things so come prepared come with your water come with your hats come with your umbrellas come with whatever you need come with a park um, what do you call it a parka uh, rain poncho just in case um but we want to go out meet a few more people we want to let them know that we are here in the neighborhood um, because how else would they know? All right. We're going to just go out and and um, bless their hearts. Hopefully, as ours will be, bl will be blessed as well. We want to remind you that on Wednesdays, we have our prayer at noon, ATFM, prophetic prayer encounter every 12 o'clock p.m. Good food for lunch, right? Good spiritual food. We meet on Zoom. All are welcome as we pray corporately for our church. And then in the evenings, Apostle Dwayne goes on for Prayer, Power, and Prophecy on Facebook. Jump on the group. We will put the link in the chat for you if you are not already connected. And we resume our um, 7 p.m. Souls and the Kingdom. Sorry, Walking in Discernment. I'm getting confused. Walking in, the, in Discernment. We continue as we wind that series or that part of the Walking in the Supernatural series down. And recordings, as always, are available for that. And finally, on Thursday, 
the men are going out on the town, leaving the women and the children behind to, yeah. ma to maybe plan for themselves, right? Um, They're going to be meeting at King's Dining and Entertainment at 7 p.m. for bowling, pool, and great food. We can't fault them because we had our own time, girls. It's all right. It's all right. But we want to encourage all the men to be out. Guys, you don't get a lot of opportunity to do this, so please come on out. Have a grand old time. We will be rooting for you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Get it together, okay? Have a great time. And I think that is about it other than offering. So if you prepare your gifts, uh, we have ways to give online. The basket is here for you if you care to give in person, I'll, have, I'll ask Jaden to come and help us take that around. But Father, we just want to bless you for the multitude of gifts that you've given to us, Lord God. Whether they be physical, whether they be spiritual, Lord God. Um, you are so generous and so extravagant always. And you teach us like a good father how to be like that as well. How to be cheerful givers. How not to swallow our seed, chew it up and it go to our stomachs and do nothing but how to give and see it multiplied in kingdom work so we thank you lord god that you always give i can look back on my life and see where Ever there was a tight space, Lord God, you always were faithful to bring us out into a broad space. You've done it for us personally, and you've done it for many of us sitting here, and you have done it in the life of our congregation as well, and you will continue to do so. So we bless you, and we honor you, we glorify you, and we magnify you, Lord God, for being Jehovah Jireh, the one we can trust and lean on and find safety in you are our help we thank you lord for providing even for those who are watching online for if there's anyone who has a need today we thank you lord god for meeting that need in miraculous ways we release and declare miraculous supply supernatural supply lord god we thank you even for insight and foresight for your people to be able to recognize and see where they can be a help to another person lord god i thank you for opening lines of trust and communication where somebody can ask and not be too proud to say i have a need can you help and i pray father god that you would help us as well to be able to to get wealth and create space that we can be a blessing to others without it being too much of a burden on ourselves as well i thank you lord god because you are faithful and you are good and as we go from here father i just want to lift you up and glorify you i want to thank you and magnify you i want to declare that your name is great father we recognize your presence here we honor you we reverence you we respect you lord god we make your name great we declare that you are the god who does not change you reign forever lord god and we thank you for your blessing on your people lord god that everything that concerns them is covered I thank you for blessing in their mind, God, in their mentality, in their mental health, Father. I thank you for capacity. I thank you for margin, Lord God, for giving them room to enjoy you and to enjoy their families and each other. I thank you for healed relationships. I thank you for healed hearts where they were broken. I thank you for physical healing, Lord God, for throats and for feet and for backs and for cancers, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are reigniting. You are revitalizing, God. You are giving wisdom for healthy activity, for healthy eating lord god for exercise lord god you're making room in our lives god so we can pursue the things that will give us good health and long life lord god we thank you for miracle signs and wonders in this place and in this space lord god and in your kingdom lord god the demonstration of you your um your keeping power and your saving power we thank you for lives snatched from the pit of hell lord god and for the opportunities as we seek for them each week father to be an encouragement and a demonstration of your gospel in others' lives. In Jesus' name and in Jesus' name, amen.